welcome back to the show. Erica Drum is in charge in the sex kitchen this evening and is promising sweet treats. For those who are only yes. joining us, I don't know where you've been <laughs> so much. I'm very um, what? Yeah, what are you making? We are making a very, very moist, delicious almond and orange cake. And you guys it's have so some ready, so yes, ready already, before and after. So I wanted to use rhubarb because it's coming into season now. This is forced rhubarb, so you'll see it's much pinker. And that's the first rhubarb of the season. What did you say? It's, it's called forced rhubarb. Forced where rhubarb. It's, it's put underneath terracotta pots with an opening and it's forced to grow quite fast to the light. Yeah. It gives it a bit more sweetness, so not so quite as tart. Can we say encouraged rather than forced? Because <laughs> forced sounds no, kind of I've been the first, making yeah, up this yeah, cake. Yeah. The first forced rhubarb um, was in Yorkshire and it was done with, it picked with candlelight and everything. It's all very, and that's the name it has, 100 years old, but this okay. is, uh, wow. yeah, absolutely gorgeous. How Ryan's how rhubarb, grown orange? in Dublin. How you just said orange? How can I? Yeah, I can't, no, I've never seen it done like that. <laughs> I always put my hand on it. And what I do is actually I catch the pips in my cool. fingers. I think it comes down to laziness of not having another <laughs> implement to clean. Oh, okay. Than, yeah. okay. And we thought it was because you forgot clean. to bring the juicer. No. no not so, that. so these are really juicy oranges, and we're going to put the orange juice in with the rhubarb there. Now, I've put it on to number three. I'm going to bring it up to kind of a medium heat. And what we're doing is stewing rhubarb very simply. But just don't play with it too much. Just okay. leave it in your pot. And, and it's getting stewed in the orange juice. It's just getting stewed in the orange juice. So the sweetness in the orange juice will release up that kind of, you know, the tartness of rhubarb. Mm. Oh, so that's kind nice. of our topping, as you can see on the cake. And of course, could vary in the seasons to something else, but it works really well right now to have okay. rhubarb. So we're going to leave that be, stew away. I might put it up a bit, bit higher to give us a bit of... Um, when you say stewing now, are you bringing it to the boil and letting it simmer or do you never bring it to the boil? I don't think so. Okay. It, it basically, you don't want it to be frustrated and, and bubbling around because it will start... It's already been forced. Yes. You don't want to forced it to be well. here already. Please. <laughs> <laughs> so see the way it's bubbling now. We don't really want it, it all to start moving around. And alternatively, you could actually bang it in the oven for five or six minutes, all on the recipe there. Mm. So... As it, as it moves around, it starts separating. Whereas I've tried to keep it together um, so that you can really get a bite of rhubarb. If that makes okay. sense. Yeah. Yep. Rather than, but you can do it either way. Stewed rhubarb before your porridge and stuff is, is oh, okay, you know, yeah. lashing in, get it hot quite fast. Mm. Okay, for the cake, could not be easier. Okay. Six eggs. I'm telling you, this is like my new favorite go-to cake and also something you can make with lemon as well as orange. It's beautiful. And it's gluten-free. I do like the bowl, by the way. <laughs> the glass bowl? Yeah, no, no, just with, it's got the little ledge on, yeah. For a crack in the eggs. And actually, I love to cook when I'm teaching or on here with glass bowls like this that you can see inside yeah. and what's happening. Um, but you could use anything. Actually, I was thinking you could use a Nutribullet or a food processor in your house. Something, or one of those soup guns. Yeah. Like, it's a very forgiving cake recipe which doesn't happen very often no. with cakes okay so we've got our six eggs and in on top of that we're putting in 250 grams of caster sugar that could be golden caster sugar as well if you wanted all right and we're going to give it maybe 30 seconds with the electric whisk okay same with the nutribullet turn up your telly ready <laughs> turn it the no turn it down turn your telly down yeah. <laughs> it's only for a sec no, i know turn it up so you can hear oh i don't like the noise of the whisk so do you not down. John, turn the telly down. <laughs> so really what I'm doing is combining them. We're not adding too much air, we're just combining them, the two. That's it. 30 seconds. Okay. Okay, so if it was a, a soup gun or a food processor, same, just a blitz to kind of, you see the sugar will dissolve a little bit in the eggs and it's all well combined. Then we're going in with equal parts of the sugar to almonds. So that's ground almond. Lovely. 250. 250, well done. I was done. paying Martin attention. Is, paying yeah, attention. Martin's going straight home to cook this, aren't you, Martin? And then a pinch of cinnamon, optional. If you hate cinnamon, don't put it in, but I absolutely adore it. So I'm putting in some cinnamon and then the zest of the orange. So remember, we have the juice of the orange mm -hmm. in here and the zest is going into the cake, so we've got double orange flavour. The thing about the zest is it's got oils in it. So they hit kind of your mouth differently than the juice. So you oh, definitely, yeah, it's the same with, with citrus, with lemon and stuff. I'd often use the, the zest and the juice in whatever I'm making so that I get the double flavour. Don't waste it as well. It really smells so orangey. So, this is where like kids and stuff get involved because it's not too fussy. It's not like a 
Victoria sponge or something where you really need your precise. Yeah, and you have to mm. keep the air in it and everything. Mm. It's kind of sloppy, messy, kind of. But, but you definitely want like, it combined. Once it hits that oven, that's when it becomes. Yeah, exactly. So that's it, all mixed together. That is your cake. All right. Line your tin. If anyone sees these in their house, this is what it's for. Oh, yes. <laughs> <This> <laughs> my, <laughs> there'd nearly be more out. of these in the fridge than there would be actual butter <laughs> when we were really? kids. Funny. But this is what it's kept for, to scoop a little bit of butter into it and rub it all over whatever you're using, your tin, okay. or you could use a loaf tin like I have with the cake that you guys okay. have there. But the parchment paper is... Yeah, the parchment paper is also stuck down with a little bit of butter and it's kind of essential for this cake, I have to say. It sticks to the edges otherwise. We've got about two minutes. Great, cake is going in. One, two, three. So with the measurements you've given, what inch is that baking tray? Is this that 10 is about inch? about nine or 10, yeah. And with this size, it's about 30 minutes. And then in the loaf tin, so something a bit tighter, narrower, where the, where the cake's gonna be deeper, is about 40 minutes. Okay. okay. You keep an eye. So up 180, so we'll do a swap a roux here. Okay. That. And that has gone in. 180, 30 minutes. Easy peasy. Right. Oh, look, it's Comes golden. Out. Okay. Golden. Get yourself a little skewer. If you don't have one, a spaghetti would oh, work. Yeah. All right. Yes. Okay, so you're piercing that all the way over. Nice. Good while it's hot if you want it to go in like a, like a lemon mm -hmm. drizzle. But if you want it to be thick, like I've kind of done in the other one, you don't have to put it in while it's hot. Okay. So icing sugar. My rhubarb is lovely and soft. I'm going to take the liquid from the rhubarb. See that orange juice mm -hmm. is going into... Is that all that makes it pink? Yeah, we the, have about a minute. That's what makes the topping pink, yes. You have not to uh, add anything to it. No, look. Because the forest rhubarb is, is known to be more um, pink in colour. So mix it well, you don't need to sieve it. It will com come together and we have don't a minute. Guys, already. get tasted, well, I'm going please. To, I feel like I always I get your taste and I never get to taste. it is. Oh, it's it really is so soft. It's only eggs, almonds, and sugar, really. Do you know? And oh, equal delicious. parts. delicious. So we're going to pour that over the middle seat. All that is going right mm. into the holes, into the edges. And if we can crack it open, it's going to pour everywhere, but who cares? It is gorgeous. On this. Isn't it lovely? Really, really gorgeous. I always get, you know, people on the street be like, would you ever tell them to taste it while you're live? Mm. I want to know how lovely it is. Well, well we're getting in. to taste it while we're live. So, and, and it is, is moist, and that's you what did, you said. Did, this one, it was done on the loaf tin. That, exactly. looks amazing. So, I love the flower dressing. Gorgeous. Okay, I'm going to say thank that's you to it. everyone while you do no that. Problem. That is all from us for tonight. A massive thank you to all of our guests for joining us and to Eric for the treats. And yeah, yeah. Remember, you can catch Erica's recipe on our socials. Give it a rewatch if you like YouTube. Just search VMTV Food. You have Ray Foley and Una Healy minding you tomorrow night. They're going to be chatting to Rob Carney and Samantha Mumba, so make sure you tune in for that. Look after yourselves. We'll see you soon. Bye.